Welcome back, everybody, to Apologia TV. My name is Jeff Durbin. They call me the Ninja, and that is Luke the Bear. What up? And over there is Zach Attack. Hey, now. I guess the Director of Communications for EndAbortionNow.com. Uh, very important show we're doing here on Apologia TV. If you guys don't know who we are, you guys can get more at ApologiaStudios.com, A-P-O-L-O-G-I-A Studios.com. You can get over 200 radio and podcast episodes, uh, all kinds of important um, uh, topics, uh, theological, apologetics, eschatology, political, um, all kinds of stuff with just a broad uh, spectrum of different uh, guests, uh, scholars, theologians, scientists, great stuff. Go to ApologiaStudios.com to get it. Also, you can go to ApologiaStudios.com and you can get all access where you make all of our content possible and you get our TV show, our after show, and Apology Academy. You can learn from theologians like Douglas Wilson, Dr. James White, John Sampson. Uh, we also have some new stuff with Nate Wilson, Andy Wilson, our favorite Christian author, and um, some important stuff coming soon. Uh, to bless you guys from Dr. Joe Boot. Very important stuff and uh, encourage you guys to go there, get all access, get the content and help make the, uh, this content possible. Uh, so this particular show is very important. And you might be noticing that you're watching this right now on Facebook or YouTube. It's not just up on our All Access or on the NRB network because uh, we think it's very, very important. Mm. It's vitally important that the world hears about what's happening uh, with our brother and our friend, uh, Tony Miano. Some of you guys know Tony from uh, past broadcasts that we've done. Uh, Tony was instrumental in helping us as a church uh, to see the need to go and to proclaim the gospel in the area of abortion and to work to rescue children outside of the abortion mills. You may have seen Tony uh, in uh, our producer Marcus Pittman's film, Babies Are Murdered Here. If you haven't seen Babies Are Murdered Here yet, make sure, you guys, make sure you guys do so. You can see it on YouTube completely for free, Babies Are Murdered Here. You can also go to babiesaremurderedhere.com. So Tony uh, was instrumental in giving us a lot of inspiration and encouragement to go out ourselves. So when you see endabortionnow.com, that whole effort uh, in, in many ways was um, through God's grace and power in Tony's life mm. and helping us to see the need for this kind of ministry. So uh, thousands of children at this point have been saved through the work um, of Apologia Church and our ministry and it going out across to other local churches. Um, uh, but a lot of that has to do with just the consistent witness of other Christians. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring Tony on so you guys get a chance to say uh, hello to him and uh, get to know him. Tony, welcome to the broadcast, brother. Pastor Jeff, thanks for having me. Absolutely, brother. So uh, just a quick update on where you're at. You moved from California to Iowa. Tell us about that. I did, yeah. It's been now about 14 months. Uh, packed up the family, uh, left uh, Beverly Hills. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, moved out here to the uh, eastern part of Iowa, Davenport, Iowa, along the Mississippi. The reason for our move is one of uh, our supporting churches, Grace Fellowship Church here in Davenport, asked us to come out and be part of the church family and continue the work out here. So here we are. Praise God. All right. You're in Iowa. So it, it's just the question, obviously, how are you adjusting to all the cold weather now? Well, I'm adjusting better than uh, my ladies. My ladies are all California born. Um, I was born in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I spent the first 10 of my 53 years out there. So uh, I love the weather. We're expecting a snowstorm today mm -hmm. and this evening up to about eight inches of snow. And Whoa. Wow. Yeah. So um, I am, though, feeling my age when it comes to shoveling my driveway and sidewalks. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> All right, so uh, Tony, let's just get right into it. And we have a lot to cover today in the show. We're going to be playing for you guys um, some audio uh, available to the public uh, from Tony's recent trial. Uh, he faced criminal charges and was sentenced for preaching the gospel outside of a Planned Parenthood in Davenport. Uh, that's right, Tony, right? It was in Davenport. Actually, it was Iowa City. Iowa City, okay. So yeah, it was 50 miles west of us. Okay, so 50 miles from where you're at. And uh, uh, Tony, again, was facing criminal charges, and he was ultimately arrested. He was given a 30-day mm -hmm. suspended jail sentence. Uh, we want you guys to hear... Uh, what the judge said to Tony, and we need you. We really, really need you to help us. Please help us. Even as you're watching this now, go ahead and hit that like and share button because we need to make sure that the world hears about what happened to Tony and light can be shed on this so that we can stop this kind of judicial tyranny in the future. Uh, it's very important that you help us. And so, Tony, why don't you bring us into the conversation? What were you doing and what happened? Sure. Uh, the date was May 30th of last year. It was a Tuesday. Uh, I was outside of the Planned Parenthood in Iowa City with 
one of the elders of my church, Elder Nick Rowland. Um, we try to get out there most Tuesdays. We stand on a public sidewalk about 60 feet from the front door. The uh, entire property is enclosed in a wooden fence, but for the driveway. So we stand at the driveway on a public sidewalk, um, calling out to people who are coming in and out of the abortuary, uh, pleading with them not to murder their children, offering them every form of help conceivable, uh, financial, housing, medical. Um, I offer the women the spare bedroom and, and bathroom in my home. Uh, we hold signs of various kinds, including we will adopt your baby. Um, our church uh, is uh, finds adoption a very important aspect of our church life. We have about a dozen children, adopted children in our church. And uh, we do that every Tuesday. Uh, most Tuesdays, we have some kind of interaction with uh, Iowa City Police Department. Uh, somebody will call and the police department will come um, every time but this one occasion. Uh, we uh, were left alone to do exactly what we were doing. Uh, on this particular day, I was standing on a, a small step stool so I could see over the fence uh, on a public sidewalk, again, about 60 feet from the front door. Uh, was not using amplification, and we never have at that particular location. And uh, I began to read scripture. Um, I got uh, through about seven verses, seven passages of scripture, uh, when Officer Jeffrey Schmidt of the uh, Iowa City Police Department arrived. Um, I stepped down from the stool to talk to him. Uh, he spoke briefly with Michael Bailey, the head of security for Planned Parenthood of the Heartland, which covers a number of uh, Planned Parenthoods in uh, Iowa and I believe Nebraska as well. And uh, he then it issued me a citation um, and arrested me there, basically a field arrest, which meant I was issued a citation, but was not actually taken into custody at that time. Okay. Uh, the citation was for disorderly conduct, loud and raucous noise, likely to cause alarm or distress to people inside of a public building. Uh, shortly thereafter, I went to court and uh, entered a plea of not guilty. Um, Jack Edwards, uh, an attorney in Wyoming, saw the video of my arrest and reached out to me and said, hey, I'd like to offer you my services for your criminal trial pro bono. And, uh, and so we went to trial. Okay, hang there, Tony. I want to hear the rest here. Very important stuff. Obviously, we need you guys to get the word out on this. You're not going to believe what was actually said during the sentencing itself. So stay with us, guys. Let everybody know about what's going on with Tony. Let's shed some light on a very, very dark thing. Be right back after this break. This is Warner with the Paul G. Radio. I want to ask for y'all good friends of ours to go on and click that button there and become my friends on the book face. A, a Facebook backslash Paul G. Radio. Become my friend on YouTube. That there uh, twerker. The twerker. I want, to, I want to talk to you on the twerking. And send me out a twerk. What? Wait, what? Twitter, Apologia Radio on Twitter. I also want to tell you we talk about apologetics and theology and we do a lot of swing dancing and we make a delicious chicken gravy. ApologiaRadio.com Welcome back everybody to Apologia TV. I'm Jeff the Ninja, that's Luke the Bear, and that is Zach Conover. EndAbortionNow.com, Director of Communications. Guys, if you haven't done so yet, go to EndAbortionNow.com. Get your church, your local church, signed mm. up. Get all the free resources and the free training to be involved in this effort to bring the gospel into collision with the culture of abortion. Save lives, bring the gospel, and uh, let's uh, trust God to uh, allow the church to truly be salt and light in this area. We're on right now with our good friends and our brother in Christ, um, uh, Tony Miano. Uh, we've known Tony for a, a long time. We've done uh, some stuff together, uh, preached at, uh, actually preached at the same conference mm -hmm. together. I uh, love Tony a bunch. Uh, very, very saddened to hear about um, 
how he was uh, abused. Uh, from my perspective, I was abused in a court of law. Uh, Tony was um, arrested and uh, cited, criminal, criminally cited outside of a, an abortion um, mill in Iowa City, Iowa. Uh, Tony's been uh, describing to us what took place. So, Tony, you were given the citation. You were given a criminal citation. You were not using amplification, although um, we use amplification, and mm-hmm. it's uh, allowed uh, under law. Mm-hmm. There are Supreme Court cases and Federal Court of Appeals cases on that particular issue. But bring us more into what took place after that. Sure. On uh, January 9th of this year, I stood trial in uh, Johnson County, uh, which is where Iowa City is located. Uh, Because it was referred to as a simple misdemeanor, it was a jury of six instead of the standard jury of 12. Uh, The prosecution uh, called three witnesses, the two responding officers, and Michael Bailey, the security guard for Planned Parenthood. Uh, The Prosecution opened with their opening argument, trying to emphasize that uh, I was arrested not for what I said, but how I said it. Mm. Now, the interesting thing about all that, uh, as we go through this, is that it it will soon become apparent that it was the content of my speech. That's right. And not my volume that ultimately led to the situation. Um, The part of the law in Iowa is that... um, causing uh, distress as part of this disorderly conduct statute. The the people brought forward the case through Michael Bailey, the security guard. Um, His testimony alone, they never identified anyone that was actually under distress. No one who was distressed testified. Uh, The uh, judge allowed the security guard to testify on behalf of unknown people inside the mortuary. And uh, uh, the security guard said that he knew people were distressed because a couple of people were talking about what I was doing and some people were shuffling in their seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, once the, I'm sorry? No, yeah, yeah I'm just, I just can't believe that. So okay. Go on. One, once the, for the sake of time, once the people rested, um, we broke for lunch. Uh, my attorneys and I discussed whether or not I should testify. Um, I understood that this was really going to be my only opportunity to proclaim the gospel to those in the courtroom. Uh, so I said I wanted to testify. And uh, and that's what I did. And my attorney asked me, Tony, uh, why were you raising your voice? And I said, because I wanted people inside the building to hear me. Hmm. Right. And, uh, Simple enough. And, and he asked, were you trying to cause anyone distress? I said, no, I, I, I'm trying to bring hope to these people. Mm-hmm. Uh, the prosecution asked me no questions. And uh, the jury deliberated for about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, the foreman of the jury turned out to be a friend of one of the prosecutors. Mm. And uh, in short order, I was found guilty. Um, I waived uh, I waived any kind of extension of time for my sentencing. I wanted to be sentenced then and there. And Judge Edward Leff uh, sentenced me, as you said, to uh, 30 days county jail suspended sentence. He told me he wanted to send me, um, he, he was tempted to send me to jail for a few nights uh, to teach me a lesson mm. and then spend the rest of the sentence. Um, and as you will hear in the audio, he equated the proclamation of the gospel with cussing at people. Yes, mm-hmm. he did. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. he did. It was a powerful moment. I need you to hear it. I know we're going fast today, but I want you to hear portions of the trial itself. I'm going to play you just what we were describing there, what Tony was describing, his opportunity to come up. By the way, you are not required to come up and uh, to testify uh, part of biblical law, which provided the basis of the case law in our in our own nation, uh, was that you don't have to be a witness against yourself. Mm-hmm. And uh, if right. somebody has evidence of a crime against you, then um, they have to prove that case. You don't have to help them along the way. One thing I didn't mention, um, I'm assuming many of you guys know Tony. If you don't, Tony actually was in law enforcement for a long time and actually retired uh, from law enforcement. So he knows the law well. He Mm -hmm. is very strict and operates within the guidelines himself of the law. But this is Tony uh, taking the opportunity to bring the gospel. I just want you to hear that moment of the trial. Uh, At that time, were you uh, appointed or assigned to be a chaplain? Uh, that would be later in my career. The last eight years of my career were spent as both a deputy and a chaplain. Okay. Uh, did you join the sheriff's office to become a chaplain? No, I did not. 
Why did you become a chaplain? I became a chaplain uh, because during the first year of my law enforcement career, uh, Jesus Christ saved me, took my heart of stone, gave me a heart of flesh, brought me to the realization uh, that I had sinned against the Holy God and that uh, I was due the punishment owed me for that sin and that was eternity in hell. Uh, a sergeant on the department explained to me the gospel that 2,000 years ago God the Father sent his son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man and without sin, born of a virgin as the prophet Isaiah declared more than 700 years before his birth. As God in the flesh, he lived a perfect life in thought, word, and deed. And at a time appointed before the foundation of the world, he voluntarily went to a Roman cross, suffered and died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment I rightly deserve for my sins against God, and then forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. And it was at hearing that gospel message that I realized that I was not right before God, that his wrath was upon me. And by his grace and his mercy and his love, he caused me to be born again. And he gave me the gifts of repentance and faith in Christ. And so at that point, my entire life changed. I continued to serve as a deputy sheriff. Uh, but my focus uh, on that department was not only enforcing the laws, but to ministering the gospel to my brothers and sisters behind the back. So powerful moment. Mm -hmm. uh, praise, awesome. God, praise God for that moment and praise God uh, for giving you the grace and the boldness and the power in that moment to, to, to clearly communicate the message of the cross and forgiveness uh, as a matter of public record now. Yeah. So praise God for that. Awesome. Uh, Tony, yeah. one of the things that was brought up, um, I think, during this moment of cross-examination with your attorney was the fact that you, of course, were in law enforcement and you were a chaplain as well, that you have hundreds of hours of training um, in, in uh, the area of theology and ministering. You um, have written Christian literature. You worked for Living Waters Ministry. The fact that you are a minister of the gospel, that was a part of the trial. You are a minister of the gospel going out and doing your duty as a Christian, uh, exercising your freedom of religion and freedom of speech outside of a an abortion mill, and uh, that didn't really seem to have any effect. Uh, no, in, in fact, Pastor, uh, uh, I think in a sense, in a in a temporal way, I think that pretty much sealed my fate uh, in, mm. in this trial. Um, but um, the people inside that courtroom needed to hear the gospel. Mm. That's right. That's right. So I, I, we have about a minute left here in this segment. I'm going to, when we come back from this break, I'm going to play for you all uh, clips from the sentencing itself. I, I will tell you uh, some of the stuff is just shocking to hear. Yeah. And what I'd like to do is, is really just take this last minute that I have with you before our commercial break and just truly, really encourage you to please share this particular episode. I, I know it's easy to take it in yourself and just sort of pass by it, but it, it's vitally important to understand that with the gift of media that God has given to us today and social, social media in particular, the power of the share button, I, I'll just illustrate it by, by way of this example. Um, we were uh, we faced a difficult moment with Tempe uh, police uh, here at mm -hmm. the abortion mill ourselves. We were live streaming it. We knew they were harassing us. One of our brothers was uh, criminally cited. Uh, when we were there, we were live streaming. It was seen by over 3 million people, and the city of Tempe Police Department received hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of complaints <laughs> because of their lawless activity. And so we were protected because the world knew. Um, and I want to ask you to please help Brother yes. Tony by letting the world know what he's going through and what has happened. So be right back, guys. Hit that share button. You're going to hear more from the trial after these messages. I want their faith to not just be something that stands, but something around which culture can be built. We want students who can um, think critically about arguments, but also about the culture around them. They can then speak clearly to it, and that also have the ability to influence and shape because of the power of their message. Because that's really what the gospel does. The gospel throws down all the arguments against it. It speaks to the hearts of people, it influences, and it changes.
Welcome back, everybody, to Apologia TV. I'm Jeff. They call me the Ninja. That's Luke the Bear. And that's, Z I almost said, that's Joy the Girl. Sorry. <laughs> that's Zach. Red com communications with endabortionnow.com. Make sure you guys go to endabortionnow.com and get uh, started. Also, just a, quick, just a quick note here. Please pray for uh, the three of us. Uh, um, we are going to Ireland uh, to try to uh, be an encouragement and a help to the church in Ireland. Speaking of abortion, mm -hmm. Ireland's one of the last Christian nations, historically Christian nations, that still criminalizes abortion, yep. both in the North and the South. Uh, the South really facing uh, a beast with the uh, repeal of the Eighth Amendment as a real possibility uh, coming up here very, very soon. So we're going into Ireland to bring the message uh, and help of endabortionnow.com, a ministry of Apologia Church, to try to encourage the church there to bring the gospel into collision with that culture and to hopefully avoid uh, the uh, blood guiltiness mm. that we have now in our nation yep. uh, in uh, mm -hmm. Ireland. And so uh, here we go. We are now going to talk about the portion of the trial where Tony gets sentenced. I'm going to play the audio for you. Uh, before I do, Tony, anything you want to say in particular about this portion, the sentencing itself that we should know? Well, um, I was given an opportunity. I was offered the opportunity to address the judge. And uh, I weighed that with my attorneys. Uh, my goal was to proclaim the gospel to everyone in the courtroom. The Lord gave me the opportunity to do that. And so at that point, I really had uh, nothing else to say. But as the judge started uh, the sentencing, uh, his sentencing speech, it took, it took all the patience the Holy Spirit could give me not to interrupt the judge like okay. every 30, 45 seconds with the words that were coming out of his mouth. And it was it's important to note that, as, you, as I, I'm sure you're going to play some clips that uh, will drive this home, it was the judge's sentencing speech that filled me with the most joy because he made it abundantly clear mm. that this was not about loud noise, that this, in a sense, wasn't even about abortion. Mm. It was about the proclamation of the gospel and how much... The people of Iowa City, uh, at least some of them, hate Christ and his gospel. Mm, that's right. Mm. This is genuinely, truly, without question, persecution for oh, yeah. the message of the cross. Here we go. And certainly those things would argue for deferred judgment. But I would think as a officer, former officer of the law, having been warned, that your activity was disruptive, causing distress to people inside Planned Parenthood, having at one point sworn to uphold the law and having, you know, been told that, and, you know, having concern for others as I think the minister would. I want to pause there for a moment just to say, yeah. um, to, Tony was operating within the law. First mm -hmm. and foremost, as we said on our radio program, having this same discussion, Acts 529 shows, the apost 529 shows the apostolic witness in regards to a situation like this, when the civil realm is commanding the apostles to stop preaching in the name of Christ, uh, bringing his blood upon them, and specific orders are given do not preach in this name anymore. The apostolic witness is we must obey God rather than men. Right. Amen. So in, in terms of the law of God, Tony is operating well within it. Uh, but in terms of current uh, law that we have in our nation, thank God for the biblical worldview that provided the First Amendment, the freedom of religion and the freedom of speech. So he's operating well within that. And then in terms of where we're at today, in terms of court proceedings and opinions, I'm not saying courts make laws, but courts have already ruled in favor of the First Amendment itself. And the Supreme Court, uh, Saya versus New York, mm -hmm. and the Federal Court of Appeals cases that demonstrate clearly, one, you cannot prohibit free speech because the person hearing it finds the message offensive, or two, they can hear it. Right. Yep. So those no two things. Veto. Hackler's yeah. veto. So 
in terms of the law itself, Tony being a police officer, this is a, I'm, you don't have to say anything here, Tony, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, this is a slam against Tony. You should know this. You're a law enforcement officer. That's the point. Yeah. yeah. Tony knows exactly. the law and he's operating well within it. And in terms of what's happening behind those doors, I want to make note of the fact that behind those doors, Planned Parenthoods across the country, 1,000 children lose their lives a day. Now, that means little boys and girls are being uh, disemboweled, decapitated, and then dismembered behind those walls. Mm. And we have a minister of the gospel being uh, persecuted and treated unjustly for the proclamation of the gospel and the offer of help to mothers and fathers who are destroying their children inside. And this man, our brother, is being persecuted. Please share this. Here we go. That the last thing you would do is go back, and not just go back, but is go back and continue to talk in a volume loud enough to cause distress to the people inside. And, you know, you weren't just standing there, I think, with a placard. You were standing there, peering over the bushes, doing it in such a way that you can direct your words towards the people in Planned Parenthood, even so far as to try and talk people into not going in. Exactly. Uh, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> that's what freedom of speech is about. Yeah. That's what it's. That's what it's all about. And he's well within his rights to do so. And again, as we said on the radio program itself, uh, Zach, you missed this. Um, that's that's one of the benefits of living in this nation. Thank God for the mm -hmm. biblical worldview. I'm allowed to stand outside of a Walmart. I'm allowed to stand outside of of KFC. Somebody and could come to church if they wanted. You could stand outside you know, of my like, church yeah. and and, uh, and protest and say, uh, I don't agree with this message. Yeah. I don't think you should go to that church. That's the benefit of freedom of speech. And that judge would probably let them. That, yeah, I'm sure. That's and, can I say one thing yeah, real please quick do, about yes. the, it? Sounds very similar to what we're facing over here in that the issue seems to be you can speak. You have the right to speak, just not the right to be heard. Mm, right. That's yeah. the distinction that they're drawing the mm. line at is you can talk all you want as long as they don't hear you inside. That's right. Which uh, sort of undoes the whole reason for the First right. Amendment in the first place. And I'd like to also make note of the fact that I'm sure that the colonists were causing distress to the king in England and to the people in red coats and to the, to the English who, who thought differently. And so I mean, you understand there's a context, an historical context to, to the First Amendment itself and the privileges and rights that we have. I shouldn't say privileges, they're rights um, that we have there. And so... Given that, the nature of that, the foundation gives us all that we have today, the foundation for why Tony was operating well within the law. We're going to take a quick break, go over to ApologiaStudios.com to get the after show to hear more. We'll be right over there. Go to ApologiaStudios.com, get signed up, partner with us in all access. You get all of the radio programs, you get the TV show, you get the after show, including Apologia Academy, and you partner with us in ministry, bringing the gospel around the world.